Hey guys, this is Caleb. I have an important message to give you guys tonight, and it pertains to um, the Father's heart. And in order to be able to follow Jesus in a way um, that displays the Father's heart, you got to understand what His heart is. So I want to start off with Luke 19.10, when it says that the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. So we see that Jesus came onto this earth to restore relationship from all sinners, from all broken men and women, back into right relationship with God through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is primarily the Father's heart, is to see His creation come to know Him and worship Him and have a fruitful relationship with Him. When we understand that, it helps us to live out the Father's heart in our lives. If Jesus wants to see people come to know Him, then we should want to see others come to know Him as well. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, show what it looks like for disciples of Jesus to go into the world and obey what Jesus has commanded us to do. He says in these verses, All authority on on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all of the things that I have commanded you. And behold, I will be with you until the end of the age. Jesus gives all of his disciples, all of those who profess Christ, a charge to go out into the world and to make disciples. And he doesn't finish it with that. But he says afterwards that we should also teach them to obey all all of the things that Christ has commanded us. So making disciples who also make disciples. So if we are going to be a disciple who makes disciples, if we're going to be a disciple who lives out the Father's heart to seek and save the lost, and to see our friends, and to see people around us who are far from God come to know Jesus, then we have to understand His heart. And we have to understand what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So what does it look like to be a disciple of Jesus? He gives us a very clear command and example of what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus when He calls His very first disciples. So he calls Andrew and Simon Peter, and what he says to them is this, Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He creates this dichotomy. He creates this this coin of discipleship. So here, I'm going to give you guys an illustration to show what what Jesus commands of us as his disciples. It's like a coin. On the front, you have George Washington, or in this case, Jesus. And in the back, you have fishing for men. I think in Western Christianity, a lot of us understand what it looks like to follow Jesus. We read our Bible, we pray, we go to church, we get into fellowship. You know, we grow in our relationship with Jesus. But what we miss out on is the other half of what it means to be a disciple. When Jesus calls his disciple, he doesn't say just to come and follow me. He also says, I'll make you fishers of men. And oftentimes we miss out on this and what it means to fish for men. And whenever we do this, essentially what we do is we take a coin and we try to split it in half. It doesn't work. Jesus calls his disciples to follow and fish for men. Because it isn't just enough to love Jesus for ourselves. We have this this love, this, this power that defeats all sin, that has risen us from the grave, that has given us new life. Christ has called us to go and fish for men, to, to usher them into that relationship as well. So whenever we are obeying Jesus, it is important that we understand how to follow and fish for men. 
So why is it so hard sometimes for us to fish for men? Right? I know some of you right now, um, you're sitting here watching this and you're thinking, oh no, I'm being called to share my faith and all of a sudden you're maybe seized with fear or anxiety. Because sharing our faith and fishing for men, sharing the gospel, proclaiming the gospel in our, in our workplaces and in, in our schools and in our campuses and to our friends and family can be scary. Why though? Why do we feel this fear when it comes to fish for men? So we talked about earlier how Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Jesus is in the business of seeing people come to know him. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 says that God is not slow in fulfilling his promise as some would count slowness. But he is patient towards us, not wishing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. God is desiring that all of his creation would come to repentance and understand the love that Jesus Christ has for them. So it's very clear that God is in the business of seeing people come to know him through Jesus. So if God is in the business of seeing people come to know him through Jesus, what business do you think Satan is in? The exact opposite. He wants to see no one come to know Jesus. He wants to see no one come to repentance. He wants to see no one have joy and have hope and have peace. He is the father of lies. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he wants to see. So it makes sense that whenever we are called to go and share the gospel, we're seized with fear because there is a cosmic battle going on, Ephesians 6 talks about, in the heavenly realms over every soul on this earth. And what that soul doesn't realize, what that person doesn't realize is that the battle has already been won in Christ Jesus. That Christ has already defeated death when he rose from the grave three days later. But Satan is now trying to keep every follower of Jesus, every disciple of Jesus from going out and proclaiming that message because they will not be able to receive Christ as their king if you do not go out and proclaim the gospel to them. So we experience fear, we experience anxiety when it comes to fishing for men because Satan does not want to see us win souls for Christ. There was a battle going on over your soul whenever you made Christ your king. But when you made Christ king, he lost that battle. Jesus stomped on his throat. So now Satan's focus for your life is to see you lead no one to Jesus. To see you win zero souls for Christ. And I implore you today to not be content in merely following Jesus, but obeying his command to fish for people. To your oikos, to your friends who, are, who you know who are far from God, and to strangers and to people you don't know in your communities that are far from God. The Father's heart is to see every man and woman on this planet come to know him and to reach repentance. God has called every follower and disciple of Jesus Christ to go into the world and to make disciples, to baptize them, and to teach them to make disciples. And it starts with you going out and fishing for men.